Okay, determine the forces in members BC, FC, and FG in the Fink truss below. Here's the Fink truss. 36 feet tall and 38.5 feet sections at the bottom. Okay, and I've got three loads, two kips at B, three kips at C, and two and a half kips at D. Uh, BC, that's this member here. And then FC, that's this member. And uh, FG, that's this bottom member. Okay, well, if I want to use the method of joints, I'd probably have to start off at A and work my way towards the unknown bar forces. I recommend the method of sections in this case. Uh, the method of sections is more convenient if you uh, don't need the bar force in every member. Uh, but the first thing I have to do is, cal is calculate all the external reactions. Uh, so there's no horizontal loads on this, so obviously the A sub X is zero. A sub X is zero because there are no horizontal reactions. Uh, but I do have to find the A sub Y and the E sub Y. Okay, now uh, pay attention to the geometry here. Notice I have an angle alpha and an angle beta. If you look at the dimensions, I can create these special triangles to evaluate the trigonometric relationships that I'm going to need later on. Okay, so I'm going to keep referring back to these triangles for alpha and beta. Okay, can you see alpha and beta here? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the external reactions. And I calculate the external reactions like so. The sum of the moments about point A is zero. Okay, sum of the moments about point A. So I have here a reaction E sub Y times moment arm 154 minus 2 times 38.5 2 times 38.5 minus 3 times 77, 3, moment arm 77, minus 2.5 times 115.5, 2.5, 115.5 uh, is equal to 0, I get E sub Y is 3.875, okay, so this will be 3.875. Okay, so now uh, find the sum of the forces in the y direction, set that equal to zero, because that's what I'm doing here. Okay, pause the video if you have to. A sub y is 3.625, so this will be 3.625. Okay, and to verify to verify this, you could take the moments about point E. Okay, so 3.625. So uh, I'm going to try to find these bar forces. I'm going to use the method of sections. Now, the method of sections requires me to cut a section through the bar that I'm interested in evaluating, or the bar that I'm interested in finding the force. So if I cut a section through B, C, F, C, and F, G, uh, perhaps I can find those bar forces without having to resort to starting off at joint A, as I would with a method of joints. So I'm going to cut a section right through here. So I cut section A, A. Okay, now watch what happens when I cut this. Okay, I'm cutting through section A, A. So my next drawing, I'm just going to show this part. Okay, I'm just going to show that part. So take a look at this. There you have it. Okay, now what happened here? Uh, the black lines represent the original bar members. Now remember that there was a bar going from B to C and a bar from F to C. Uh, when I cut section AA, I'm replacing those bars with uh, what uh, you might call external forces, external loads on the uh, portion of the, uh, the complete portion of the truss that's to the left of the cut. Okay, so you see what I have here? Okay, so look at it again. 
cut through AA. If I cut through AA, that means I'll have an unknown bar force BC, unknown bar force FC, unknown bar force FG. Those become external forces when I draw it in this fashion. So how do I find, how do I find any of these? Uh, I could take the moments about point A. Well, if I take the moments about point A, I notice that F sub BC and F sub FC, those are going to generate a moment about point A. What if I take the moments about point F? If I take the moments about point F, then neither FC nor FG are going to cause any moment about point F. So that would enable me to find F sub BC, wouldn't it? Uh, probably the easiest way, uh, but it's not the most obvious necessarily. If I take the moments about point C, uh, you notice that FC and BC go directly through point C, meaning that these aren't going to generate any moment about point C. Uh, just the F sub FG will generate moment about point C. So probably the quickest way to do this is to take the moments about point C. And if I do that, I don't even have to consider the F sub BC or the F sub FC. So that'll be my next calculation, the sum of the moments about point C, and I'll find F sub FG directly. Okay, throw this dimension on there. The horizontal distance between F and C is 38 and a half feet. Okay, so make sure you catch that. Okay, some of the moments about point C is zero. You know where I'm getting these? F sub FG is the only unknown. So I calculate that to be about 5.615 kips. Okay, so I have F sub FG now. I'll use the exact answer. 539 over 96. Okay, uh, so two more unknowns, BC and FC. Uh, I got a couple options. I have a couple options. Why don't I find the sum of the moments about point F? So I propose taking the moments about point F. So what generates the moment about point F? F sub BC does, but it'll be co times cosine alpha because that's the horizontal component. And uh, what else causes a moment about point F? Uh, the reaction A sub Y does. Okay, so I should have two terms in my moment equation if I'm taking the moments about point F. There should be a term for F, B, C, cosine alpha uh, times the moment arm. Uh, the moment arm about F, that's 18. Uh, the distance between B and F is 18, so the moment arm for F, B, C, cosine alpha will be 18. And then the moment arm for A sub Y will be 38.5. Okay, so that's what I have here. Some of the moments about point F is zero. Uh, follow my math here. Cosine of alpha is 77 over 85. Where am I getting that? Remember my special triangles from earlier? Cosine alpha adjacent over hypotenuse. Did I do that right? Okay, so F sub BC. Uh, this is the exact answer. Uh, about uh, negative 8.6 kips, or 8.6 kips in compression. So let me go back to my figure. Okay, so F sub BC, here I'll uh, write the exact version, 2465 over 288. Okay, how is that? And uh, lastly, I need uh, the force in bar FC. Uh, there's a couple ways I could do it. Uh, equilibrium equations. The sum of the forces in the x direction is zero. The sum of the forces in the y direction is zero. Uh, why don't I take the moments about point A? That might be the easiest way to do it, because then I wouldn't even have to include the FG or the BC part. Uh, so if I take the moments about point A, what's uh, to be considered here? I'll have the two kips, and I'll have... Uh, uh, what else? Just the F sub FC, the vertical component of it. So it'll, uh, it'll have to be, the F sub FC will have to be multiplied by the sine of beta. And uh, beta was one of my special angles from earlier. Remember this? So remember this triangle. I'm going to use this in a, in a moment here. So I'll take the moments about point A. So taking the moments about point A, I have this equation. Negative 2 times 38.5. Okay, so here's A, 2 times moment arm 38.5 plus FFC sine beta. 
That's the vertical component of this vector, sine beta, the sine beta here, times 38.5, uh, moment arm 38.5, the distance between A and F. Okay, sine beta, that's one of those special angles I had earlier. Uh, it would be forgivable if you used a decimal approximation here. You don't have to use the square root of 11,113. I just like to be exact. So when I solve it for F sub FC, I get 136 times the square root of 11,113. Uh, for practical purposes, about 2.93 kips. Okay, so let me draw that on my figure. Uh, I want to use the exact value, though. So I'm going to write 136 square root 11,113. Okay, how was that? So those are, the, those are the three things he asked for, the three bar forces. Uh, just for the fun of it, why don't I find the force in bar AB and the force in bar AF? So uh, what I just demonstrated was a method of sections. Method of sections, that is we, we cut the truss at at a convenient location, the cut has to go through uh, at least one of the bars uh, for which we're trying to find the force. Uh, now, to find the force in bar BA, uh, why don't I use the method of joints at joint B. So next I'm going to analyze joint B. So I'm going to take out joint B and analyze it. So how many, how many bars feed into joint B? three of them, uh, and then there's this external reaction of two kips, or external load, I should say. Okay, so this is what I have. Do you agree with this? I put my angle alpha there. Uh, now, uh, just for variety, normally we think of the x-axis as being horizontal and the y-axis as being vertical. Uh, just for variety, why don't I rotate this, like so. I'm going to say that the x-axis is along here, parallel to, uh, sitting on top of, a bar A, B, and a B, C. So I'm going to rotate the coordinate plane here. So what I propose, I'm going to have a coordinate plane. Can you see this? Rotate it an angle alpha. Okay, so that'll be my coordinate plane, and this angle is alpha. Okay, how is that? So if I do it that way, then I don't have to resolve BA and BC into horizontal and vertical components. However, I do have to resolve two kips into components that are uh, parallel to Y, if I'm talking about the vertical direction, this being vertical, and another component that's parallel to this new X direction. It'll make more sense when I draw the new vectors on there. So I'm going to break two kips up into its x and y components, and I have to do the same thing with f sub bf, so watch this, it'll appear like magic. So that's what I did here. I turned the two kips into its horizontal and vertical components, uh, this being horizontal and this being vertical, and then the f sub bf, I break that up into its vertical and horizontal components, and then you notice I lightly cross it off here to remind myself that uh, uh, these two vectors replace this one, and similarly here, these two vectors replace this one. Okay, so that makes things uh, uh, maybe a little bit more convenient. Okay, so here's what I'm looking at. Okay, so can you sum the forces in the x direction? Sum the forces in the y direction for equilibrium of joint B? Uh, I'm going to do that for uh, the sum of the forces in the y direction first. So what's in the y direction? This and this. Those are in the y direction. Did you catch that? I'll write an equation. So that's what I'm doing here. The sum of the forces in the y direction is zero. Minus two cosine alpha, that's this one, going down. Minus FBF cosine alpha, that's this one, going down. Remember, we're looking at it like this. Is equal to zero. Uh, alpha, that was one of those special angles that I had earlier. So F sub BF, two kips in compression. So now uh, do the same thing in the X direction. Do the same thing in the X direction. 
So I find the sum of the forces in the x direction, negative FBA, that's this one, minus 2 sine alpha, uh, that's this one, minus FBC, that's this one, of course I already know the value there, minus FBF sine alpha, that's this one. So those all go in my pseudo x direction. Okay, now some of this stuff I know. Sine alpha, that was one of my special triangles. Uh, alpha was one of my special angles. FBC, I know. Uh, be careful uh, in my drawing here, my free body diagram. I already show it pointing to the left. So this minus is this minus. It's pointing to the left. The FBF, uh, the FBF, I was assuming that I was assuming that is being in tension, wasn't I? But it's actually in compression. So when I substitute that in, I have to preserve the minus sign. So this minus sign is because on my free body diagram, it's pointing down. The second negative sign is because uh, I assume the wrong direction. And then sine alpha. Okay, so follow my algebra. F sub BA is this. Exact value, approximation. I'm going to transfer all this information over onto the original drive drawing of the truss. I'm going to transfer over all the calculations, all the things I've found. So I transfer everything over to my original drawing. Uh, I preserve the exact answers. Uh, for practical purposes, I recommend decimal approximations to two or three decimal places, but the mathematician inside of me wants to keep it exact, so I preserve all the exact bar forces. Uh, it looks like I never found the force in bar AF, so my next order of business will be to examine joint F. And now analyzing joint F, I have a free body diagram here, F sub FG, F sub FC, F sub BF. I notice that this is in compression. Uh, so I don't bother showing the negative, uh, but I'm orienting the vector in the proper direction. So uh, this is uh, the free body diagram of joint F that we're talking about here. Okay, so by considering equilibrium in the X direction, I find that uh, F sub FA is uh, 2,233 over 288 kips, approximately 7.75 kips. So I'll write that on my figure. Okay, so I finally find F sub FA, that's uh, 2233. Uh, 2233 over 288. Uh, so it looks to be in tension. Okay, so in the original directions, uh, he asked about the force in member BC, uh, FC, and FG. I found those, and in addition, I found bar forces in AB and AF. Uh, so I've demonstrated here the method of sections as well as the method of joints. Uh, and now you could uh, use joint A to verify these two figures. Uh, make sure that joint A is in equilibrium. Uh, I challenge you to do that on your own. Make sure that joint A is in equilibrium. Uh, so there you have it.